questa è una domanda a cui la risposta principale è quella di guardarsi intorno e ci sono tantissimi esempi di solidarietà vissuta, basta guardare alla solidarietà di tutti quelli che si provitano negli ospedali, lo faranno per dovere perché sono obbligati per il loro giuramento come medici, come infermieri, ma non si può nascondere che c'è tanto spirito di solidarietà in quello che fanno e in come lo fanno. Noi abbiamo avuto delle persone che sono state in ospedale, che sono uscite fortunatamente grazie alla provvidenza di Dio che le ha salvate dalla malattia, sono uscite dall'ospedale edificate da quello che hanno visto, dagli sforzi che vedevano fare nei medici e negli infermieri per suscitare in loro una visione più di speranza, per suscitare un sorriso, per suscitare un momento di distensione pure in quella situazione. Come anche hanno visto la il dolore, il dolore forte dei medici che non erano riusciti a salvare le persone. Questo indicava quanto questi medici si fossero veramente immedesimati nella sorte di quelli che stavano male, di quelli che morivano e questo è sicuramente un esempio fortissimo. Ma poi abbiamo visto il moltiplicarsi di solidarietà in tutti i modi, anche nel nostro movimento. Abbiamo visto quante persone sono state capaci di mettersi a disposizione del vicino di casa, magari più anziano, malato, per portargli quello che aveva, di cui aveva bisogno, condividere il cibo eh, magari dalla propria tavola con, quel, con la tavola degli altri meno forniti, abbiamo visto bambini che mettono a disposizione i loro giocattoli, li mettono magari sul pianerottolo delle scale in modo che altri possano prenderli senza, eh, evitando in tutti i modi il contatto per evitare il contagio, ma nello stesso tempo perché tutti possano usufruire di quei giocattoli che magari per loro sono stati di, di conforto, di aiuto in tanti momenti. Abbiamo visto la solidarietà di chi ha, ha inventato tutti i modi di mettersi a disposizione e di mettere a disposizione i propri talenti, i talenti di chi sa insegnare, che si sono messi a disposizione degli studenti e noi abbiamo nel movimento tantissimi professori, tantissimi maestri che in questo momento fanno le scuole da remoto, le, la scuola a distanza e con che amore cercano di prepararsi, di dare il massimo perché la cultura non vada indietro in questo momento difficile. Abbiamo visto le persone che si mettono a disposizione per andare a fare la spesa o che si mettono a disposizione per portare la spesa che non può muoversi. Insomma, i momenti di solidarietà sono moltissimi. We've had to put the whole community into virtual online. That includes Tfila, that includes Shiurim, that includes communication between and pastoral outreach um, with an absolute minimum of inter and taking care of one another. Um, but in some ways, this very isolation and distance between us has engendered a, a proximity of heart and spirit. People feel a profound solidarity. When I talk to people, and we have a whole outreach system to particularly for the over 70s in our community, but when I, I try to ring a number of people each day who I hope would appreciate it, Most of them tell me the neighbors have been incredibly kind. There's a spirit of closeness that they haven't experienced before. Many people are coming to Shiurim. And there's a sense also that, that you know, this is not the persecution of a particular religion. This is not a national problem. There's a sense that humanity is together in this across the globe. And, um, and that can be deeply moving. So there's distancing. But there's uh, a sense of spiritual togetherness, a togetherness in hope, in prayer, in concern for one another, and in participation in our whole society. There's a huge appreciation for people working in the National Health Service here in Britain, people providing food, people making deliveries. And by extension, there's a sense of identity and solidarity with those services in other countries. And very, very large number of people particularly young people saying, what can I do? How can I volunteer? How can I help? The whole commonality of suffering makes them forget their branding as Hindus or Muslims. And that I see as a very positive thing. I'm not saying that, that the religious branding or the religious identity should vanish in the moment of suffering. That is not my idea. But 
the branding or the nomenclatures which keep kept me separate from my Muslim brothers or sisters is not a very wonderful idea. Rather, the suffering is welcome, which demolishes the differences and allows me to share the suffering and the happiness of my Muslim brother and sister. So that way I see this is a interesting positive side of uh, this global catastrophe. And what the academic and the religious enterprise could not make us understand the core idea and with the core idea is of all the religions, even uh, Hinduism says the same thing, you know, Vasudheva Kutambukam, that definitely this whole Mother Earth is one family, one family. But it remained at a slogan. It remained at a slogan. But now today, every country, every continent is trying to understand the problem and share the problem, share the resources available to them, whether it is medical resources or many other resources or even cultural and spiritual resources, like uh, what we are doing just now. We are sitting together. You are sitting in Israel. I'm sitting in Vrindavan and we are pooling our resources together, working under one roof of a sky, under one roof of, in the home of God. And that realization is very, very direct and very important to me as a Hindu. We have to go back to our roots and the root will give us the strength. You know, the root is that we all are living in one home and the home is earth. That is for sure. And that is the resource given all spiritual disciplines, all, all religious traditions. Mother Earth as our home, one home. But it has many houses. The home has many houses, many nations, many religions, etc., etc. So we, but this global borderless experience also give us some kind of positive kind of uh, strength to realize that we are all on common grounds. All our houses and mansions are built on some common ground, some common ground. So in this situation, what do we do? Draw the resources from our own tradition to serve the needy, to serve the needy, our neighbor, our distant neighbor, whoever is in need of our help, in whatever way, monetary way, physical way, um, mentally, emotionally, in whatever way we can help and serve in this hour of need and share our resources, not just the economic resources, but the resources of music, resources of poetry, resources of uh, paintings, resources of all these things through social media and resources of uh, medical expertise because there are some traditional medical expertise uh, which many people in India are using as a preventive medicine. And uh, the modern uh, medical science allopathic system may not agree to that. But a uh, huge number of Indians are believing that it has not taken a pandemic uh, proportion in the country of 130 crore people because they are practicing something traditional. So those traditional wisdoms also should be shared and should be uh, clinically tested and uh, verified for the human good. What I would say is that this is just something happened with mother nature like other things you know, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, you know 
flood happens and uh, maybe uh, earthquake and so forth and now corona it's just something happened with mother nature and we human being as inhabitants of this nature simply have to accept it and uh, live with it and uh, there may be various consequences of the situation if we truly uh, believe in God, if our faith is truly sincere to God, then uh, we will have uh, a complete conviction that there must be, uh, there will be a way out you know, for us from this situation. So, and also that if we truly sincere and I believe uh, in God, then we will come to a um, uh, to a conviction that God will guard us. You know? God is always uh, guarding us from from uh, any uh, uh, you know from any dangers. So, for example, I, I also encourage my students, you know, to go out uh, checking our neighbors, you know, if there are among them who uh, need uh, help and support. So uh, they go around and, for example, in our village, we have uh, like 12 families who are really in a, in a, a very hard situation that need support. So then we mobilize uh, uh, support for them, something like that. So uh, I encourage uh, my uh, students also uh, to not to just, uh, you know, stay and uh, disconnect themselves from people, but, uh, uh, you know, keep having, uh, you know, care about others. Um, now, again, this is uh, uh, something that uh, we can we cannot avoid, we have to deal with. And um, first, we have to find strength within ourselves. And then second, we need to find a way to strive collectively in this situation. See, I was, I, I am told by, uh, by uh, you know, doctors and medical experts that uh, if we, uh, if we con conduct our uh, relationship in a certain parameters, then there is opportunity that we can uh, we can still engage with other people safely. Now, what we need now is uh, then more, first more uh, uh, sense of togetherness because we are not alone in, in this situation. We are in a hardship, but many others in the same situation too. Now, we need to find a way to help each other. So, uh, because uh, if you ask about how religion can help with this, with the situation, uh, you know, I think helping each other also uh, a core value in every religion, including Islam. So this is time for us to think about how we can raise uh, we can find a way to raise, uh, uh, you know, uh, togetherness, you know, and help each other in this, in this situation. We are acting 
very practically because with our, our outreach, with our caritas, eh, we help uh, practically people in difficulty. Uh, with the mayor of the city here in Assisi, uh, we are collaborating to help uh, senior people who are <coughs> compelled to uh, uh, remain at home and uh, we have some people, some young people, of course. I am a, a risk person at, at, at the age of 20, 22, I can do it. But uh, some uh, young people are going uh, through the, the homes of senior people to help them. And uh, we are in, in touch with the mayor of the city for all the difficulties, all the, 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 the situations who can uh, have uh, the, the need of our help. Our WhatsApp, our mails, our uh, Zoom are really full. I, I can't stand this because uh, everyone uh, uh, asks questions, uh, proposes prayers, uh, proposes reflections, Sometimes, sometimes also ob objections. Eh? Uh, we have some people who can't understand uh, this measure. Uh, they wanted us uh, to uh, to be uh, rebels to the government. Government have some people also. Uh, we had uh, uh, just today in Italy uh, uh, a priest not here in Assisi in, uh, uh, in uh, Emilia Romagna, né? who said, people, w we must protest against the government. And I also must uh, confess that in, in the first days, I thought to our uh, president or, or the prime minister and said, please, if it's possible, uh, leave us uh, the churches, at least for some celebration with all distancing, with all measures and precautions, because I know that with, for, for our people this is very, very, very uh, difficult. Uh, they answered me, uh, you are right, but we cannot uh, allow it because we, we, we have no enough carabinieri to, to, to put uh, uh, soldiers in, uh, for all the soldiers, the, the, the church of, of Italy uh, to, uh, to control that all is, is made if it's good. I said, uh, we um, gave our collaboration, but really it's a difficult, it's a sadness for our people. And uh, in this way, this way we, uh, we try to, to give a response. Another thing, uh, um, uh, I think I uh, uh, spoke to you about our project here in Assisi to uh, promote the spiritual families, groups of people gathering in the houses for prayer, but also for mutual assistance, for mutual collaborations. Uh, we uh, call this, these groups, uh, this network of groups, families of the gospel, uh, to distinguish them from the natural families. Uh. For me, one of the deepest, deepest aspects of being in service here is that service and that action is actually rooted in a very fundamental and core spiritual religious teaching which is that the divine pervades all. And the, the, the teaching here is that the most natural outcome, byproduct you can say, of a really strong and deep meditative practice, contemplative practice, prayerful practice, is the awareness that we are one with all, that there is no place I end and this tree begins. There is no place I end and the children begin. 
And so if my meditation is real and my meditation is deep, it is going to compel me to act because not to act would be to deny the awareness, the truth that I've experienced in my meditation and my contemplation. And that for me has been a very, very deep teaching because whenever there is any kind of natural sort of stress or frustration or anything in, in the system or in the community with regard to the, to the action, Puja Swamiji's teaching is always fix your meditation. It's never, it's never about fix your action. It's always about fix your meditation because if you are really deeply meditating, really deeply praying, really deeply contemplating, and you are not then serving with love, there's something wrong in your meditation. And so it's a very deep and very inspiring teaching because it's never about fix the outer manifestation of the meditation. It's always about where, where is your meditation gone awry? that somehow you've become stressed or frustrated or living in a state of separation from those you're serving. And for me, the easiest way to understand that has to do with our physical body. Because whenever something goes wrong in the body, I'm always right there to take care of it. If I've got an itch, I'm gonna scratch it. If I've got a pain, my arm's gonna go there. If I hurt one leg, the other leg picks up the extra weight. It's what we call limping. And there's never a sense in the body of, oh my God, you know, I'm really tired of scratching my itches or I'm really tired of limping. We keep doing it in instinctively because we have such a deep awareness that the whole body is self. And so, that's where the action and the service stems from, is the awareness of the, of the oneness. And so, yes, it is extraordinarily full of service in the same way that the human body is constantly serving what the blood vessels keep doing and the heart keeps doing and the lungs keep doing and the neurons keep doing and the circulatory system is doing and the muscles are doing. Everybody is doing their dharma. And that's really the way that we, that we serve here is this, is this is our dharma to serve the same way that the dharma of the lungs is to do that exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide and the dharma of the heart is to pump. Each of us has our, our dharma in the service. And so we really are ultimately serving ourselves as much as we are serving others. It's not about us over here who have serving those over there who don't. It's about through the service, us having the opportunity to experience ourself in others.